What's up? We're back. <laughs> What's Stories up, worth fighting for podcast. Jeremy Jones. How you doing, for, man? Uh, thanks for coming and hanging out. Hey, man, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited too. So nice, man. let's yeah. get into it. What do we want to talk about? <laughs> so first of all, a uh, little intro. Jeremy Jones, the founder of Georgia Followers. Yes, sir. If you don't know what that is. Uh, what, what is Twitter Followers? So GA Followers is basically a, um, we basically use all the social media platforms to talk about the state of Georgia. So uh, Twitter, that's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We have a website as well. And we just talk about Georgia pride and like the cultural uh, symbolisms that, that exist here. And yeah, and we've been doing that for so long that we've kind of like snowballed and, and uh, achieved so many, you know, well, gained so many followers over the time. And yeah, now we're here today. Awesome. So yeah. I'd love to hear mm-hmm. kind of how that came to be. But but first, yeah. tell, me, tell me about you. Where are you from? Um, man, I'm. I was born in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, my dad. My dad was uh, in the military. Time out. So the yeah. founder of Georgia Followers is not <laughs> from Georgia. Yeah, I get a lot of flack for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was born in Mobile, Alabama, um, which is like the southern part of Alabama, and. Um, my dad was in the military, so when I was around five, we kind of we moved around a lot. So um, we moved from there to North Carolina, from North Carolina to San Diego, California, from there to Maryland, uh, like the D.C. area. And then once I moved to the D.C. area, uh, I moved to Atlanta. I started visiting Atlanta every summer. This is like around sixth grade. And um, yeah, I've been like living in Atlanta ever since, kind of. Nice. And wh- why were you visiting every summer? Uh, well, you know, my family, divorce issues and all that type of stuff. So, like, I had, a, my mom was living in Atlanta okay. while my dad had, like, you know, when he was in the military, or he still is in the military, but during his active years, really, um, he had married somebody else, and we were kind of like, I was living with his family, or my family. <laughs> same, yeah. Same boat, man. Yeah. yeah. Parents divorced, and I was living with mom in Atlanta and yeah. dad in Philly and back and forth. Back and forth, yeah. Like so, I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing. Like, you get to experience more than the average kid does. Like, I got to see a lot growing up, like, moving and, and understanding different cultures, like going out to Cali and, you know, understanding Hispanic culture and, like, listening to Santana and stuff like that. Like, oh, I mean, those times are important, you know, and it really shaped who I am today, for real. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, so you were you were going to school in D.C. and stuff. Yeah. Visiting Atlanta over the summer. Mm-hmm. When when did you make the move here? So I made the move officially here. Uh, I want to say in sixth grade. That's when okay. I started. Like I started attending middle school in um, Jonesboro. Well, Stone Mountain at first, and then we moved to Jonesboro, Georgia, mm-hmm. and I spent middle school and high school there. But then once I graduated from high school. I moved back up to D.C. with my dad and started going to college a little bit up there to the Art Institute for like music production because I was a rapper nice, at the time. And then, um, you know, I did that for a couple of years and I moved back. And like since I moved back, I've been here uh, for like the last four or five years. OK. Yeah, longer high school, Atlanta, uh, post yeah. high school, D.C., a little while and back. So when does um, the social media empire this news outlet when when is yeah. this, this um so this is when i was after high school i had moved up i had moved up to uh dc because i was kind of getting in trouble here in atlanta like at, what kind of trouble um uh, just hanging around the wrong people like i was every day i was smoking weed um hanging around the wrong people like you know hanging around gangs and stuff like that mm-hmm. a little bit um my grades were horrible you know um but uh, so once I moved up to D.C., you know, I was making music. I was making music, and I went to the Art Institute. I was making beats, too. Um, but while I was at the school, like, one day I was like, man, hey, I want to promote my music to people locally. You know, and I, I got the, you know, I'm from Atlanta. Like, why don't I just create a page that talks about things related to Atlanta, and then I could, like, promote my music there, too. You know, and then what I began to see was, like, people were more interested into the, um to the news than my music. Not to say my music was bad, but like just people were gravitating to like the news, sports and events that we would talk about on these pages. Mm-hmm. And I just continued doing that instead of like the music. But you know, I still got a little love for music in my heart. Yeah. Still, <laughs> I still freestyle. I still freestyle every now and then, man. Uh, yeah. But yeah. 
So you, you started that like uh, end of high school, after high school? This is after this is after high school when I was going to the Art Institute. Okay. This was like I was in their computer labs just like and I just came up with it one day. It was like, hey man, I had a graphic designer uh, that was literally sitting next to me at the time and he created a logo within five minutes. <laughs> the one you still use? Yeah, the one I still use. Awesome, man. Crazy. I didn't pay him. He just like, yeah, man, I'll do it. And then like he gave <laughs> it to me, and I've just been using that logo ever since. Dude, same thing with Brawl for a Cause. Yeah. There's a, a sophomore at UGA. Right. Our student, really talented girl. She was like, yeah, I want experience with this. Right. Like, How does this? I was like, that's amazing. Right, you right. Still use it today. Right, right. Same kind of deal. It's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. Like, lines up yeah, that way. yeah. Uh, so people helping people. Love yeah. That. Yeah. Okay, so this guy was sitting next to you, you get the logo, you mm. have this idea to, to build a following, build an audience for, for your, your, yeah. your music, people are responding to the news. Yeah. So you start that in, in Georgia. D yeah. Did you start any other? Well, yeah, I started, uh, since, while, since I was in D.C. at the time, like I started, uh, like I guess the brother company or the sister company, uh, uh, DMV Followers, which the DMV stands for D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Um, so yeah, we. I mean, I had a lot of success doing that as well. But yeah, nice. Yeah. So so you have these kind of in both places where mm -hmm. your life is. Right, like right. Before you have these two, right. Ones that are yeah, growing. that are growing. Yeah. Um, and and are they growing at the same rate or no? So just, okay. yeah. So uh, initially, the DMV one was the bigger one at first, and that was the one that allowed me to really see that it was something there to like mm -hmm. duplicate. And um, I remember calling my partner, I have a co-founder, his name is Josh, and uh, I remember calling him while I was in D.C., like, yo, I got this thing up here that I'm doing, like, I need you on board for this, and we need to do it in Atlanta, too. And he didn't really understand what was going on, because social media was, like, kind of new at the time. I mean, it wasn't new, but, like, Twitter was new. Yeah. So this was around, like, 2010, and... Um, you know, he just didn't really see, the, he didn't see the importance, like he didn't understand what was going on. And I had to like call him day after day, like, no, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. Like, you got to see this. And then he ended up getting on board and helping me out. And we've just been doing it ever since, like just nice. been consistent with it. And, and what's the nature of your partnership? What's he good at? What are you good at? How does that work together? Um, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so he, to me, is more of like a... Um, um, I don't know. He's like a, like, I'm more of like the think big, big picture, like dream. Like I might over kind of sell some of my things that I'm thinking, like my ideas. And he's more like, he'll bring me back down to reality and be like, all right, no, this is like, let's be realistic about this. I'm kind of unrealistic at times, but like, yeah, but it's a good balance that, yeah. that allows us to move forward, uh, in, in, in a, in a concise way, you know? Yeah. So. So I, I mean, without without you, mm -hmm. Jordan followers, DMV followers wouldn't be there because that basically you needed someone to see where social media was going, right. why there's interest in this. That right. is going to continue to get big. Right, right, right. And then someone like Josh, you know, yeah, day to day, knock it right, out, more right. realistic. And then he's he's really into. Uh, design and stuff too. Right? Yeah, yeah. Even it, um so how I met Josh was back in high school. We uh I like I said I was hanging around like wrong crew a little bit, but then like Josh was like I've known him since middle school, so I will always kind of like link up with him, go to his house, play video games and we kind of like connect that way. Um but you know, growing we always knew I well, I always knew him to be like an artist. Like he would always draw in class. He always like when I when I went in his room, he'll have paintings on his wall that like he you know he made. Um, so yeah, he's always been into design, and he I mean it's led to you know some of our clients that we've had like working with them. He draws stuff for them and oh, foot action yeah stuff. yeah foot action yeah, yeah Foot Locker cool, yeah. yeah yeah. So yeah, I mean it's it's a uh, it's funny how life works, man. Like it's just a friend, and like we we built this thing together, and now we're here. So it's awesome. Yeah. So. so I mean, I see, I see your stickers everywhere. I see people yeah. rocking T-shirts and hats. Yeah. Um, some, you know, merchandise is a side of your business. Yeah. You got this this news outlet mm -hmm. where you're putting out stuff that has to do with with people in a certain geography. Like, right. Hey, I live in Atlanta, therefore, I want to know what's happening with the Falcons in United. I want to know what's happening in City Hall this week. Or right. Right. Whatever. Um, what What else do y'all get into? Merchandise. There's news. Yeah, um, we've we've done a few of we do events every now and then, um, but yeah, I mean for the most part it is it is just like the the news sports. I mean, 
Yeah, and it, it, events like we we've done a few FIFA tournaments, like you know, yeah. So we, I mean, we're still trying to kind of like branch out and do more things outside of like the news and sports, and also the merchandise. But um, yeah, I mean, that, that's for the for the most part, that's what it is, man. We just we just stay consistent at it. Yeah. And how many years has it been? Uh, we've been doing it for um, eight years, eight year, eight eight or nine years. Wow. Um, but you know that's not to say like when we first started, things obviously didn't pick up like how they are now. Mm -hmm. I mean it was literally probably four or five years where we were just doing it, not even making money, just just doing it because we enjoyed like informing a community of people, you know. Um, but yeah, and then we started making a little cheddar. <laughs> so when did that shift happen where you're like, I want to be an artist? Yeah. And, and this is about music and this is a way to help me do my thing. When yeah. did that shift happen to, hey, this, this is good on its own and, yeah. and feed, feed and build it for, for what it is? Man, I think I really realized that when I remember, um, so when I was rapping, um, you know, I would, have, I would take meetings with people that were kind of like interested in like managing me and stuff like that. I had a meeting with Big Boy one time. Mm -hmm. um, he, and I remember he takes me... Uh, I had to be like 19 or 20, and he takes, yeah, I might have been a little older than that, but he takes me to the studio, and we go upstairs, and he's like, yo, what do you want to do? And I was like, man, like, I love rapping, but, like, I got this business that I kind of started, and I was like, man, like, I love rapping, but I'm not making any money doing this, and, like, my mom, like, I just moved out, so it's like, I got to make money, and he was like, yeah, man, you got to kind of like just work hard at it. And I was like, you know, that that's when I knew I was like, man, I got to just stick with the business right now because like that is what's going to like feed me right now. But uh, I always look back at that time period and was like, that was like really the switch for me to like, yeah, like, all right, I just need to like focus on making money. Then if this is a, I need to focus on this business versus like the rapping where, I, you know, that wasn't really making any finances really or any revenue. So. So that was a crossroads. So yeah. and, and what was that like with Big Boy? I mean, I, <laughs> wanting to be a rapper, I'm sure you looked yeah. up to someone like him from Atlanta, had the Outcast, the you know, yeah. Outcast days, and now he's a solo artist. So what, like, what was that like meeting him? Uh, I mean, it's funny. The first time I met him, we he uh, came to my house for Thanksgiving. Um, no way. Yeah, like the like it was like towards night. We were playing spades, like having drinks and stuff like that. Or my my parents were. Um, and he just came and played cards because, you know, he heard about my music and he, you know, just wanted to meet me. He let us hear his, like, new album that was unreleased and, like, it was amazing to meet him. I mean, like, I've what been, experience. yeah, like, I've been listening to Outkast since I was, like, a, like a very young kid. Um, I remember I said I, I moved to Cali. I think that's when I was, like, first introduced to Outkast, like, back in the 90s. But, um, yeah, it was, I mean, it was, and even that meeting, it was kind of like, it was a lot of, I don't know I can say pressure, but it was a little intimidating too, just because like I'm young and like this is out, this is big boy, a you know? Legend, yeah, a legend. And like, I'm even still shook to this day that I know him, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it, it was a little intimidating. Uh, so like, I always like struggled with figuring out like how, like I always didn't want to ask for too much and like, you know, um, take advantage of like the fact that like, so I just, you know, sometimes that kept us like a little distant, but like, mm -hmm. you know, over the years, I've kind of like developed that relationship now where like, yeah, I can hit him up whenever, so. That's awesome. And, yeah. and how has he helped with you, with your development, both, it, you know, personally and with Georgia followers? Um, I mean, he, uh, he was one of the first like celebrities to kind of like follow GA followers. Cool. Yeah, just because like he was a, somebody that I knew when I started it. Yeah. Um, so and then and then that that has helped like other people realize like all right he he's like a, a few times like, I've been around him he's like yo this is GA followers like and he's introduced me into like other celebrities which I mean it's cool but yeah I mean it, it's it's helped it's helped for sure helps with exposure helps with yeah. legitimacy oh, yeah that's cool. yeah and has he given you advice on you know when when you're thinking about rap when you're thinking about business. Was he yeah. was he nudging you in any direction, or was he just asking? Nah, questions? I, I don't think he. Not really. I mean, he he. Um, not really. I think he just wanted to see where my head was at. But like, I have had like the times that I do have conversations with them. They're they're not really about the business or music. Really, like, 
I remember I had this conversation with him for like maybe two or three hours. We were just sitting sitting at the studio, and um, we just like just started talking about like you know how sometimes you have like a parent you just like talking about everything. Like we just got into one of those realms where we were just talking about any and everything. We ended up starting talking about conspiracies and like aliens and like just all kinds of like the Illuminati, like just all kinds of stuff. Um, so that was real cool. But yeah, I don't think he, he's never really like put, you know, had advice for me in either real, real field, but it's just been um, fun to know him, you know? Mm. So it, maybe it, it came more from yourself, your own, your yeah. own voice. Yeah. Like, hey, this, this makes sense for me. Right, yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for cool. sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. and, and are, do you still get in the studio at all? Are there any aspirations <laughs> to yeah. put music out there? Uh, yeah, I mean, I still get in the studio. I get in the studio every now and then, uh, but, you know, really, it's just to play around. Like I, I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't take it serious right now. I think someday I might, um, but like right now, as far as rapping, I was rapping. Um, yeah, I get in the studio every now and then. But like I think to some point, I, I do want to learn instruments, and like I'm really focused on like the piano or the trumpet. And like as I get older, I want to, I want to be able to like go in restaurants and play it, like yeah. something like do. Yeah, I still got a passion for music, mm -hmm. basically. Um, so, but yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's let's shift gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so you you brought in mm -hmm. 2016. Um, just from your perspective, how how did you find out about Brawl for a Cause? How did yeah. we how did we get connected? Um, I really don't remember. <laughs> uh, what uh, I know, I mean, I mean, I've been friends with you forever. But um, um, so it was a college event. I, yeah. I oh, yeah, 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 first time yeah, met, yeah, yeah. It okay. was one of our college events. So before we were yeah. a nonprofit, we were doing like uh, basically like fraternity fight nights. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In Athens, I went to UGA. Yeah. And uh, we, we would do them at the Georgia Theater, and then a place called Hedges on Broad, right. which used to be called Manor. Right. 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 Manor. So in those days, I think it was still, still called Manor. Right. And I think Rondell. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. First, like, first <laughs> I remember Rondell was telling me. So now that now you with two eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Rondell. Shout out Rondell. Um, now I remember. Uh, so I remember I was in D.C. at the time, like visiting for Christmas or something, and like Rondell was like, "Man, I met this guy named Matt Thomas. Um, he's he's doing these boxing events." I was like, "Oh, I love boxing like that. That sounds dope." He's like, "Yeah, when you get back, there's an event. We need to go to it." And then I, you know, we both we I think we came up to Athens for something. It might have been the event. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we came up to Athens. We saw the event. I was like, dang, this is dope. I, I got to meet you. And then like the rest has been history, really. I just remember Rondell reaching out. And he's like, <laughs> hey man, like want to come out to the event, and see what you're doing. I'm yeah. Like, oh, like another dude hit me up for free yeah. tickets. Like, right, right, right. Know? And he's like, I'm with this group called GA Followers. Like check them out. And I pulled up. I'm like, yeah. At that point. Maybe, yeah. Maybe like a. Um, like two hundred thousand followers, yeah, yeah, something like that. And I was just like, "Whoa!" Yeah, like, okay, this is legit. Like, right, right. what's your story? What do y'all do? And, and the more I learned, I was like, "Yeah, these guys have to come." Like, oh, yeah, we, we definitely want people to know what we're doing, and they can help with that. And yeah, um, I appreciate it, man. Cool people. Yeah, so, yeah. so come out. So I remember, I remember that night. Um, yeah. it was really it was a great, great like. Fight card, like yeah, a great yeah, show. Yeah. And then afterwards, we ended up going to uh, to Silver Dollar. Oh yeah, Long yeah, and, and yeah, we, yep, uh, yep. And hanging out, getting to know each other more. Yeah. Um, we always have the after party with that third right, bar. They right. Thanks, guy. Too. Yeah, and, yeah. I remember um, that. And so, so that yeah, I think that's how it started. And yeah. Then, and then that was that was a really big turning point for us. Right. Because right after that, then you know, I I had graduated from UGA. Mm. I'd withdrawn from law school. And this thing was still kind of like this this hobby for me. Yeah. So I had this crossroads where I was like, it's, Yeah. Do I do I let this thing just stay in Athens and right. let another student run it? Yeah, and yeah. I remember it? that. Yeah. Or do we do one in Atlanta? Right, right. And you were one of the biggest reasons when, yeah. when we were meeting at Atlanta Tech Village weekly and going yeah. through like, hey, oh, yeah. like, could we actually make this work? Yeah. And you know, we were basically trading off time, focusing on GA followers and how that could grow and mature and scale. Right. And then the same thing with Brawl for a Cause. Right, right, um, right. And so that first, uh, that first Atlanta event yeah. in 2015. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't think, I, I wasn't able to make it to that. I know Rondell hosted. Rondell yeah. was on the mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was on yeah, the so mic. Rondell's been our host. Yeah. 
like four or five oh, yeah. times now yeah, yeah. with the college events and the Atlanta events. Mm. Um, so yeah, 2015 is when we, I think the first one we really worked together on. Right. And then, uh, and then 2016. Yeah. 2016, yeah, I said, I got to get in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get in the ring. Yeah. So, um, so tell me about that. What, what, made you, uh, what made you sign up? Well, um, I think I've always loved boxing. Like even um, growing up, I, I used to always watch boxing. You know, Friday Friday night fights and um, watching out on ESPN. Then even just like me and my brother, like we we would have gloves and like we would just when we get mad. Well, not even when we get mad. Like just 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 to play around. Like we'll just box. You know. So I didn't really know the technique and all that, but like I just I enjoyed it a little bit just because like I, I love the feeling of like hitting somebody sometimes <laughs> like you know what I'm saying. And you're, you're a good athlete, I mean, right? You're, right. Uh, what was your, your basketball? Right? Yeah, I play I play a lot of basketball. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the other night at painted Doug. You're yeah. Oh yeah. Three, three, NBA yeah. Three, you're like, oh, no yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm Steph Curry, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um. But uh, yeah, so I always enjoyed boxing, and then you know, once I heard about this opportunity, or once she was like, "Hey, man, you should get in the ring," I was like, "Man, I've never been a, the kind of back away from a challenge." So I was like, "All right, I'll do it," you know. And I was kind of nervous at first, but yeah, I got in there. Yeah. 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 So, um, so 2016, let's see, we were at the the Westin. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. You were matched up against a, a South African dude, um, and we're, yeah. we're in friendly humans. Sound studio right now. Right. Matt Lindbergh's over at at Friendly Human. Y'all yeah. y'all have hung out a few times. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fight night the other night together. Yeah. Um, tell me, tell me what it was like. Uh, first time fighting, going through this experience. Our programming wasn't nearly as robust yet, so we didn't have mm-hmm. as many training opportunities. It was right, basically right. Like, you know, getting together a handful yeah, of guys yeah. to beat on each other on the weekends. Yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. What What was it like going through all yeah, of that? Be, yeah, what, what emotions were were going through your head with thoughts um yeah it's interesting like i know i'm a very anxious person so like as the days or the weeks led up to it i did get kind of nervous not like not like uh i gotta back out of this like type of thing uh but it was just like man what will happen type Mm -hmm. of thing um but you know i will say like i started training i didn't do enough training (laughs) Mm -hmm. but um i started training and um yeah, I mean, like I remember we had a sparring session one time that uh, I got punched in the nose pretty hard. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, the, I mean, the whole the whole training process it was fun uh, preparing for it because I felt like you know I, I started to feel like I was a fighter. Like even though I know I mean this is a one time thing or maybe not, but uh, I just I just got into that rhythm. Like I was running every day, um, jogging at least a mile or two. You know. Um, just trying to get physically fit, eating the right things, like that type of thing. But I, 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 I once I realized after the fight that like I need to train way harder than what I was doing. And I mean, that, and that's I feel like that's how things go sometimes. You gotta kind of like you don't really know something until you know it. You know, like so I had to like jump in the fire and see what it is. And like now I know if I fight again, like I would have to train times ten what I what I did before. But yeah. The whole leading up to it was 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 a uh, uh, intense experience. Yeah, there's no better teacher than experience. Like right, you said. right. I mean, here, yeah. here's this trial. What are you gonna do with it? Right, and right. You learn. Okay. Yeah. Uh, here's all what right. I do differently. Here's exactly. What I do well, continue forward. Exactly. Um. So what, what was? Doesn't have to be the biggest takeaway. But what yeah. was a takeaway from that that training and competing experience? What What's one thing you learned? Um. It's just. Um, I think I think it's, it's it's not really learning something, but it was more of like a reassurance, you know, because like I grew up playing basketball, so I always like practice and like I understood the importance of practice. And this was kind of like training is kind of like practice in a different form, like well, at least for a boxing event. So I just, uh, you know, I just saw the importance of that, that, that practice you know, time period, you know, it's like how you got like, you have to go in, you have to be intense with it, you know, to really, to see results. Um, so yeah, it was, it was more of a reinsurance that like, I, I need to go harder, you know, like I got to go hard if I practice for anything, yeah. you know, double down. Yeah. What it is you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're, um, uh, when you focus in on something, I've seen it. And yeah. You, like Jordan followers. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It excels. I mean, yeah. It, yeah so, um, you know, uh, doubling down, going 100% all in on, on what you know you're supposed to do. 
yeah. it's a, a really important thing for, for people to learn yeah. in general. And just and also too, I would say like the consistency like of of that practice, like just going at it every single day. That's what builds like champions to me. You know, it's just like no matter what, like I gotta get up and do this. And um, yeah, uh, I, I think that was that was the biggest takeaway, just like the practice aspect. How do you apply that mentality to what you do at at Jordan Followers or DMV Followers? Yeah. So uh, another, I mean, again, it's like consistency. Like I, I think that is what allows me to allowed me to get to the point that I am today. It was just like I understood. Just like in basketball, like I, I go to the gym every day. I went to the gym yesterday to shoot around. Like I, I just practice on my shot, you know, and I shot a million. And I'm almost like addicted to practicing, you know, when it comes to that aspect. But uh, and I found that uh, same level of addiction within the business, like seeing the account grow and like seeing the numbers and you know, seeing more retweets, more likes. Like I got, I got heavily. I'm still kind of like into that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that um, that's how they apply on both sides. It's just like the level of consistency in the business, you know, like just doing the same thing that works. You find what works and then, then you know, spearhead that every day. The consistency is one thing I respect. Yeah. Um, probably the most. Uh, yeah. What you're doing Jordan every day. Yeah, every day. The news is coming out. You yeah. can count on this outlet to right. give you stuff that matters right right so it's that's really important and right. and applying that same mentality to other things whether it's basketball whether it's boxing whether yeah. it's a, a side project or a hobby that you want yeah, to turn yeah. into a passion or, right, or, right. A, or, or a business just getting those reps yeah that time input yeah uh, there's no substitute for it yeah once you and once you do that like once you start learning what it takes like then you can apply that to anything really so it's like yeah, like if I wanted to learn an instrument, like I know I put 10,000 hours in practicing and shooting a basketball, probably going to have to, you know, put 10,000 hours into playing an instrument to be just as good as I am at playing basketball as playing a trumpet, you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, I mean, it's just consistency. And, you know. mm. and, and consistency is easier on some days <laughs> yeah. than others, yeah, right? Yeah. But what, what about those hard days? So how, how do you motivate yourself when you don't want to post, you don't want to respond to these comments or these DMs, yeah. you don't want to deal with these media requests for you to come to an event and cover it? Like, what? Yeah. How, do you, how do you talk to yourself? Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I talk to myself a lot, man. I think a lot of the times it's just, man, sometimes I have to remind myself, and as morbid as it sounds, it's like, like there's going to be a day that I die. You know, and it's like, am I going to be happy with how I go, you know, like I got, I got to spend every day, every hour trying to be the best version of myself. You know what I'm saying? And like, um, I don't know. That's that's how I kind of like motivate. Sometimes when I'm feeling down, I'm like, man, let me just let's just go hard. Like I just gotta go harder, you know? Because the more more what I notice is the more times I'm busy, like the less I think. You know what I'm saying? Like sure. I, I mean, I do think. Don't get me wrong, but like, flowing. yeah, I'm flowing. Like if I'm I'm busy, like I, I I'd rather just be active nonstop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, even even growing up, like I just love playing outside and like, like I don't want to come in even <laughs> when the lights when the lights are out. So, uh, yeah, man. So that thing really yeah. resonates with me. That's, yeah. that's my biggest motivator. Too. Right, right. When when did you grapple with that? Because I, just death in general. <laughs> death in general, because yeah. you know, I it's it's a common thread for most of the people that I talk to that are right. hustling on something. And, right, and right. They're really motivated and inspired to do this this one thing or to, or to help people or to build this or yeah. whatever. Death, death is a common threat where they yeah. realize that time is limited, that yeah, this isn't yeah. forever and that what you do between now and that death date yeah. matters. Yeah. So, you know, in general, I think the the earlier, I'm not saying like tell your three-year-old, hey, you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> but like, but yeah. when, when you're developmentally prepared to, to deal with that kind of news, yeah. to reason with it and understand it, I think I think grappling with mortality at an early age yeah. really sets up the rest of your life. Yeah, it, true. Providing you respond to it the right way. So, do you remember when you're like, "Hey, yeah, death I'm, is I'm, a thing, <laughs> and that could happen to me"? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I mean, like, I I don't really know if there was like a switch. I mean, like, it's really been. I want to say over like the last few years that I've been kind of feeling that way. Mm -hmm. It's not like something I really thought of as a kid so much, but. 
Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think like my background has always been a lot, a lot different. From, I mean, everybody has a different background, but you know, I think I've had things in my life that kind of, you know, have been traumatizing a little bit. So it's allowed me to like see, all right, I might not have the same opportunities as other people. I mean, they might just be in a different position. So I gotta go double. I have to work harder just to get to that that point. You know what I'm saying? And like, I don't know. I, I think. Uh, I don't think I don't think there was ever a time that I really was like, dang, death is real. Like, I mean, I'm sure there was, but I can't really pinpoint it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I was for me, when yeah. I was young, um, I had two grandparents died. Right. So, uh, grandmother passed away of breast cancer. Uh, grandfather on the other side passed away from a heart attack. Yeah. And I remember being young, and and really you know loving my grandparents and spending a lot of time with them and they weren't yeah. there anymore. Right, and, right, and I remember it being explained to me like, oh, they're going to heaven, you'll be with them again someday. And I was like, right, why right. can't I just go visit heaven now? <laughs> well, it doesn't right. work that way. You know, right, it's this right, death right. thing. And, yeah. um, and, you know, so I, I knew, I guess that's when I was introduced to it, like, hey, this this concept that um, yeah. our consciousness, our life, our soul isn't always going to be in this body. Right, right, somewhere right. else it does something else, but there's this, this Passover, this change. Right. And then when I was in college, I was I was playing club soccer at Georgia. Yeah. And um, I was playing defense, and one of the, the opponent's wingers came down the side of the field, crossed the ball in. Mm. I jumped up. I tried to head it out. Mm. Um, and, and I was successful in heading it out, but at the same time, the striker from the other team came and tried to score it. Oh, okay. So as I jumped up and turned and, and hit yeah. the ball out, the, you know, the, the yeah. crown of oh, his my God. head Sheesh. went right into the, the temple of mine. Yeah. It was the softest part of my head, hardest part of his. And as soon as I was hit, I was out of my body. Yeah. So I see, you know, this, yeah. this body get hit and, and start to fall and go towards the ground when I'm still in the air. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it was the weirdest thing that ever happened because time stood so so basically right, still. Right. It, did, yeah. it took an eternity. For me to fall and hit the ground, and all that time, you know, I could see the field, I could see the world. Yeah, like I started yeah. seeing flashes of things that happened yeah. already in my life, flashes of things that hadn't happened right, yet right, that I didn't right. really recognize. And um, I remember hearing this voice, but not yet. Right, and as right. soon as I hit the ground, I was back in my body. Um, suffered a, a major concussion. Mm, I, I like damn. bounced back up on my feet. My eyes were shaking. They rolled back. Uh, the referee saw the whole thing, called the game. Yeah, um, dang. Going they called the, the game? Called the game. Wow. Yeah, so it was, it was second half. It was kind of towards the end. Uh, we were up a couple goals, and they just like... Wow, uh, okay. Um, and and so I anyway, went, to, went to the ER, spent the night in the ER. Three days. I yeah. Couldn't, I couldn't read anything. I couldn't watch any TV. Anytime I sat up, I was throwing up. Like, I was yeah. messed up. Um, and it took me a while to kind of like figure out what it what had happened yeah. to me, like what what an out of body experience was. Right, what, right, right. Um, you know, and and what what really changed things for me and changed the way I looked at death is, is the very next semester mm. I took a class called History of Death and Dying. Yeah, oh, okay. So and our first assignment was to read a hundred obituaries Ooh. and then write our own. That's crazy. It was an awesome experience because yeah. not only had I had this kind of near death experience or right, at least right. grappling with my mortality, I could have died on that field, you know, right. like a major head injury. Right. Um, but I got I got to look at these people that had lived eighty years or lived yeah. thirty years and what they had done with their life and what had gotten put into that obituary and yeah. survived by and all this stuff and I started thinking about, you know, at the end of this this one shot that I yeah. have, what what do I want said about my, me. About me, yeah. yeah, yeah, and so it, it almost turned into like a goal setting, yeah, exercise. That's interesting. Before this thing that is inevitable, right, happens to me, right. Here's what I want to take a crack at. Yeah, um, yeah. It was really powerful, and and uh, and so you you bringing up that death motivates. You yeah, know, you, you got to do the most with the time that you have. Here. Yeah, uh, it not only does it resonate with me, but I think it resonates with a lot of people that yeah. um, are really lit on fire about something. And, oh. and I, I think that people that aren't, that are kind of avoiding that death. Right, is, right. Kind of because, yeah, mostly full, along. Full yeah. And, so, like, uh, and I think, too, it's also, so now, now as you said, like, I remember a time that I think would switch, and it was so early in my life that, like, I think around when I was, like, four years old, my dad's 
dad had passed away yeah. and I, had, I, I was brought to like the funeral and I'm at four years old. I've never even understood like the concept of death at that point. But, mm -hmm. you know, my parents always tell me like I was asking so many questions. Like it was an open casket. Like, where's the rest of this? Is his body down there? Like, you know, like what? You know, I was asking a bunch of questions. And I think since then, you know, I've always like I got to see it at an early age kind of. And like, I don't know, it's, I feel like it's kind of helped me. Um, conceptualize what it is and know it's a real thing and not kind of not even be scared of it. So since you're not scared of it, like, hey, let's let's do everything we can every day that you live. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. it is inevitable. You know, <laughs> what are you going to do? Have you, you going to sit back? Goggins? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard David Goggins? Uh, David Goggins? Walter Goggins. I don't know Walter Goggins, but yeah, David Goggins. Yeah, yeah like, so he's... Um... He's a freak of nature. He's, mm -hmm. he's gone through SEAL training, Ranger training, Green Beret training, paratroop mm -hmm. rescue training. Yeah. He basically like loves these really challenging things in right, his right. life. And he's had this major transformation from 300 something pounds down to 180 pounds in a SEAL. Yeah, like, yeah. That big of a yeah. switch. Um, I was listening to an interview of his and he, he brought up that his biggest fear and, and potential regret is dying. Mm. going to the pearly gates and having St. Peter look at him <laughs> and say, this is everything you could have been. Yeah, yeah. You could have been a Navy SEAL. You could have yeah. been a Green Beret. You, you could have been a Ranger. Um, and this is what you were. Yeah. And look how much distance there is between yeah. us. Look how much you left on the, yeah. on the field, yeah. basically. And, and when, when he said that, it, I mean, it gave me goosebumps. It's gonna be goosebumps, <laughs> but it gave me goosebumps because that's that's my biggest fear. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like I've been given. The potential. And all of us have been given such a huge opportunity yeah. in your life yeah. because it, you can't control what family you're born into. You can't control yeah. you know, what, what kind of resources you get access to when you're young. Right. But what you can always control is how you respond to those things. Right, right. And with anything, you can choose to focus on the negative or focus on the positive. You can choose to make it a better situation or a worse situation yeah. with your actions. Yeah. And so the, the, you know, hear, hearing that, grappling with... Um, Okay, there there are other people that feel this way about unrealized potential. Yeah, being their biggest fear. How do they deal with it? They, right. they throw themselves into fear. Yeah, they throw themselves yeah. into uncomfortable situations and see how they respond. Right, right, right. So just like you were saying earlier in our talk, where you're like, you know, I didn't know what was gonna happen. <laughs> right. Right. Followers, but like, right. you just gotta throw yourself in there sometimes. Gotta feel and see what happens I, in, in and the I mean, snowball. To your point, like there's a. Uh, time where I um, I had a TEDx speech. Um, it was probably like 2013 or something like that. But um, at that time, like, you know, I was uh, super scared of, you know, public speaking. Like, I, you know, I got this, I got offered the opportunity to speak at a TEDx in DC. And I was like, man, I got, to, I was telling the guy, like, I don't know if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it, man. Cause I just like, I can't, like, I can't do it. Like <laughs> 1200 people. I can't do that. A lot of people. Yeah. It's a lot of people for your like first time public speaking. I was like, I don't know how that's going to work. Um, so I remember telling my mom and like my mom kind of put things in perspective for me. She was like, Jeremy, if I had those opportunities at your age, like there would be no question I'm doing them. And I was like, hearing that from my mom, I was like, I got to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't be no punk, you know? So, um, so I was in Atlanta. The, the speech was in D.C. And um, I ended up like, you know, I was, it was like two days before and I was like not going. You know, I wasn't going. I ended up like booking a plane ticket, going up there and, um, you know, creating a speech within a day. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then went on stage and uh, I bet the speech was about like how... Um, the social, you know, how Twitter impacts like the the DMV area and like, you know, slang and stuff like that. Just like the little cultural things that are unique to just the DC area. Mm -hmm. uh, and I get on stage and like I'm, I'm I was like a it was like a ten minute speech or something like that. But I get on stage in the middle of my speech, I forget everything. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> just I just go blank on the on the stage and I'm like, yo, I, I tell everybody like I, I apologize, like give me a second. Um, and then I time out in yeah. that moment. What's yeah. going through your head? What's happening in your body? Because that that's a that's crazy, right? That's a fight flight, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. That's some like yeah panic. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, and I really didn't feel that necessarily. It was more so just like 
uh, what did I say last? Like, I remember, like, what did I say last? Where, what can I pick up on now? That's awesome, man. Yeah. So you weren't even in that state of panic. Yeah, so I, was I was just like, track, yeah, just know. get back on track. And, I, and sometimes my mind does that. Like, I just, like, go blank sometimes. I'm like, all right, let me fi figure out. I'm on a computer. I'm like, I get distracted by something. Like, uh, so that happened. And um, I ended up picking up where I left off. And it was, it was a, it was a, it was a good little moment where I was silent, though. You know, it was probably like a good 10 seconds, you know, 15 seconds where I was like, everybody, like yeah, I was like, silent, everybody, can, eyeballs yeah, on yeah. I, I'll never forget. There was one dude in the front row who kind of like laughed. He was like, <laughs> like, and laughed and looked down. And then I, I, that's the only thing I remember from that, that like whole period. But then I finished my speech. I got the, the craziest ovation afterwards. And like literally after the speech. Um, people were just like it was like there was a line of people wanted that wanted to talk to me. It was like I don't know how you did that. You like you you forgot your lines on stage and then you like finished your speech like how like that is amazing. I didn't even think of it like that. I didn't even think it was amazing because I was like oh my god I messed up like you know I'm going through all these things. But it's like it was such a learning experience for me because I was like man I was completely scared of doing that like I wasn't gonna do it and uh, I just threw myself in there sometimes and like. I can say that I spoke in front of a 1,200 people now, you know, so well, it's, and, yeah. What a life lesson, too. Yeah, So, yeah. like, in adversity, you're in the arena. Right, like, there's right. There's no getting away there. Yeah, you're no, you're yeah. in the arena yeah. with 1,200 people. You're in the middle of your speech. Yeah. Freeze you, up. You get what you said <laughs> yeah. or, or what, you, what you said and where you're going. Yeah. But what people respond to is how you respond Spon to that yeah. adversity. How you pick how up. How you overcame it. Yeah. And, and that's why there's a line, you know, yeah. waiting to talk to you and everything yeah. is... is Everyone has adversity. Pain is right. inevitable. Right, yeah. But suffering is, yeah, is optional. So, yeah, you yeah. don't have to linger in that pain. You don't have to linger in that silence. Right. You can be like, okay, right. here's where I'm going. Yeah. Keep going. Let's keep it going. Um, yeah. That's that's a really important life lesson. That's a cool <laughs> moment, man. Yeah, that yeah. That's one, of, that's one of my highlights. Is man. that online? I want to see that. <laughs> nah, it's not online, no. <laughs> Uh, I do have I do have footage and like I've literally I might have watched it once you know okay. what I'm saying just because I'm like I don't even want to see myself in the, talk, yeah right? it's weird <laughs> I don't want to see myself struggle like and be awkward with that moment again but um, but yeah like I might I might take a look at it this year it's yeah. a badge of honor yeah man. yeah I got through that yeah I got through that man. I got through that I got, cool. and so so like I use moments like that to like. Uh, <clears throat> as a reference and it's like, you know, even with the, the boxing thing, it was like, yeah, I've never done this before, but hey, I'll throw myself in there. You know, bad things could happen, good things could happen. We'll see, you know, and like, and uh, I, I enjoyed it, so. And you never know until you, you try it. Right, you know? right, right. The things that eat at me the most are the things that I don't do. Yeah, yeah. What would have happened if I did that? Yeah. What would have happened if I leaned into that? Right, Instead right. of walking away. Right. Facts. Uh, so I mean, all the people, yourself included, that, that lean into that challenge that say, yeah. find someone scary. Yeah. It, it can't not be scary. You're, right. you're a lunatic if if you're not nervous and in a, a adrenal kind of state in yeah. the ring. Yeah. Right. Like everyone's gonna be scared. Everyone's gonna get hit. Right. You know right. you're walking into pain. Right. You do it anyway. Yeah, you do it anyway. <laughs> you do it that's anyway. power, man. That's, yeah, and that's those are my favorite people. And and, and then I notice too, like once you get in it, sometimes like you all that stuff goes away. Mm -hmm. You know, like you get in a boxing ring, you get hit once, everything's gone. It's like I'm here now. You yep. know, there's no nervousness. I'm on the I'm on the stage speaking. I'm speaking now. You know, I mean, obviously there's a little nervousness there, but <laughs> but yeah, like you got to get into it, and then everything is just quiet. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, yeah. Because if that chatter's yeah. still there, it's pulling you away yeah, from doing yeah. your best in that moment. Right, right. In boxing right. that means you're catching some yeah, punches. Yeah. Speaking that means there might be a little right, pause right, or right. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So sure. Being present is perfect. Yeah. How, how do you stay present? Do you ever do you meditate? Do you do any um, any kind of work like that? No, I mean like I. I uh, I, I struggle with that. I'll say that I, I do struggle with being in the now. I've read plenty of books that like teach you about like you know using your mind and realizing where you're at at mm -hmm. the moment. Um, but for me, it's hard because I'm 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 on the internet all day, so it's like I, I it's hard for me it's, it's hard for me to stay present within myself. Like I'm always searching for new things and like new trends and figuring out what's working, what's not. Um, so I, I I have meditated before. I've meditated a few times. Um, this year already, but like I, I want to get better at like 
you know, doing that often, you know what I'm saying? Scheduling myself to do it daily or something like that. Yeah, well, yeah, and then basketball too, yeah. Basketball. No, I, I mean, just getting the reps like you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Practice in. It, it, it's the same thing that you do with basketball, same thing you do, do with Jordan followers. It's yeah. the same thing you can do with meditation. No, but I will say that, like, I, I do, like, sometimes I wake up early in the morning, 5 a.m., and go to the gym and just shoot around. And, like, that sometimes, like, I'll play. I'll play jazz music in my AirPods and just like shoot around and like that sometimes like even though it's noise it's not quiet but it's like to me it's just I feel I feel I don't know like I just feel like a not an animal but like just regular you know like I just feel like I'm I'm coasting and I'm I don't know I I think that's that's how I kind of like be present those yeah. those are my best times when I'm present when, when do ideas come to you yeah, yeah. that saying like best ideas come to you in the shower or whatever. Yeah, what's, yeah, what's yeah. your version of that? Is it shooting around? Uh no, not really. Uh I mean when I'm when I'm shooting around I'm more like just present in the moment, but like um uh, I think at night, you know, at night sometimes I have days where like I, you know, it gets around twelve o'clock and I'm like, man, I get an idea and I'm like, man, like I just kinda like think about all the possibilities that can go with that, this idea. So it keeps me up to like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. sometimes, like just crazy hours. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like those are the times where I like create some of my best ideas, you know, just at night when everybody's sleeping, you know, I'm just, I, you know, everybody's sleeping. I feel like I got an advantage on everybody. And uh, yeah, I don't know, some, some great things that came during that time. I forget who it was. Someone liked Kanye. I don't know if it's Kanye. Yeah. But he, he was he was talking in an interview about like something he asks everyone that he's he's gonna work with. Yeah. How many consecutive hours have you worked on a project? Yeah. Um, and and if it's anything less than an all nighter, right, like Kanye right. or whoever it was, it's like I'm gonna work with them. Yeah. They don't yeah. get it. They you don't know, get they it. Yeah. Get being consumed by an idea and having to right. flesh it all the way out and right. sleep not being important. Having the yeah, it's not. It's like, not important. Push yourself through something. Yeah. Um, I yeah, no, nah, I mean that it's important, man. And then that's the stuff worth yeah. living for, right? Yeah, like that's that's what keeps you, keeps yeah. you energized, keeps you going. What gives life meaning? I mean, if yeah. you have something like that. It's, it's something real. Sometimes it makes you nutty, though, man. <laughs> it's a little, between, it makes you, know, you a little crazy, but like, yeah. hey, like it's yeah, like you said, it's a silver line between like crazy and like doing what you want. You know, I don't know. Like Kanye, right? Yeah, yeah. Incredibly successful, amazing artist and musician. Right, right. A little crazy. Yeah, <laughs> a little, <laughs> Maybe a little, little bit crazy. more than a little crazy. Yeah, I think, I think uh, everybody who's like a creative, I mean, you just have that side of you that, you know, it's me and me and Kanye are Gemini's too, so I mean, I don't, yeah, me yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 we're all, yeah. They're too far. Yeah, so, so yeah, I don't know. I think there's that little edge in, in me that's just like, hey. How, how much do you believe in that astrology kind of stuff? Um, not not too much. Like I, I mean, a little bit, but not like I, I do find that the people that are Gemini's they're kind of like me. I I mean, they they seem like they seem like me, you know. And uh, so I mean, I that's as far as my belief goes in that. I don't really read into it too much, but yeah, I know you're a big you know astrology advocate. I I just think it's super interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like, I I think. Um, one, people definitely fall into patterns. Right, and, right, right. And one type of pattern that you can look at people through the lens of is astrology. Yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, it, such a such a huge population right. of, of people believe in it, right, which right. gives it truth, right? right? right if, yeah. if you learn how to speak the language of astrology, you're, you're instantly going to be able to connect with this huge group of people right, right. that not just believe in it, but live their life according to right, it. Reading right. daily, you know, and I, I don't take it quite that far where yeah. it's like I'm reading horoscopes every day or something. Right. Um, but I do think that the, um, kind of using it like a personality test. Right, right, right. right. Not necessarily live your life according to it. Mm -hmm. But it can, it, it can help, um, it can help show some similarities between you and people born, True. you know, friends or whatever and compatibility stuff or, or things to look out for when, when yeah. working with certain people. It's just, it's like prompts to get you thinking. Yeah, I love doing uh, compatibility with the chicks, man. Yeah. <laughs> I love doing that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, look, we uh, match right here. <laughs> um, it's in the stars. Yeah, it's in the stars. It's not even me saying this. This is what this says, man. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. But, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. so I think... Um, 
Yeah, I, I think I think astrology is like. A, have you ever done like the ENFP, like Myers Briggs? Kind of yeah, the personality too. test. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think I did it once, but I was like, man, these people don't know. That. I'm always like, I, I always have not trust issues. I don't know if that's the right just healthy skepticism. Yeah, yeah. I just always have. I'm I'm gonna like question something first. You know what I'm saying? And then then deal with it. But yeah, I've always had like those skepticisms about like the the, the personality test. I'm like, these people don't know me because yeah. it, it, it's the same thing with like. I almost feel the same way about like therapy sometimes like um you know you go to a psychologist and i'm like why would i go to, like i i understand it could be important like just to you know spill out what you what you have inside and all that but i'm like this person i think that's what it's used for really but like i i always think like the person that i'm talking to doesn't really know me mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so they're making a lot of generalizations and like i, I always have that's another thing where i have like kind of skepticism skepticism Oh, skepticism. Yeah, skepticism. Yeah. So. No, I'm the same way. If 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 there is a very preachy therapist or life coach, yeah. where they're just feeding me advice, yeah, I don't get as much out of that. Yeah, yeah. If if they're just a sounding board, if they mm -hmm. ask really good questions, if they help yeah. me think about things that I haven't considered, it's mm -hmm. basically like what they can draw out of me. Yeah, is is more the benefit than like them telling me like slapping a label on my forehead, and right, like right, prescribing right. me some drugs. Like right. I'm not into that kind of thing at all. Yeah, but if they can help me work on myself, right, if it's right. like a teammate or a consultant that I'm hiring to like right. improve this product. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you too. When do you uh, kind of harken back to the question you asked me about ideas? Like, when do you think that you get your best ideas? Yeah, man. So I, I um. Couple times, so shit. It's cliche, but my shower. Yeah. Um, it's a weird thing in my life, but I've I've always had a window. Yeah. In my shower. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so even when I was living in Costa Rica, like the little room mm -hmm. that they put me in, like the shower still had a window in it. Yeah. It's just a weird thing that's followed me through life. But I I will sit in the shower probably longer than I need to. Yeah. And and look out the window, and it's it's basically like um. Like I'm, my mind is free to think mm -hmm. about whatever I want to think about. Right, nothing, right. Nothing's encumbering right. me. There's something comforting about the shower, like the water hitting me. So the shower's really awesome. Um, exercise is huge for me too. Yeah. So exercising without music. Without music, wow. Being 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 in my own head while yeah. my body is is occupying like a certain percentage of my focus. Yeah. Right. So like. You know, I have to focus on running and not like tripping or turning my ankle or something. Like, right. like forty percent of my brain can that liberates the other sixty yeah. percent to um, just be vibing. Yeah. Things can come in. I I've definitely like stopped mid run to pull to, out my phone and jot something. Yeah, yeah. You know, like it, yeah. um, it. For me, I have to be doing other stuff. Yeah. In order for like brainstorming or ideas or or problem solving to happen, it's mm -hmm. it's like. Occupying myself in, in you know, uh, a conversation, an activity, a project, and then uh, just kind of subconsciously, yeah, it, it seeps in. Um, you know what's interesting too? Uh, now that you say that, I be uh, sometimes it's weird. I have this weird thing where like right before I fall asleep, I like ideas come through. Like mm -hmm. literally right, like when I'm in that dizzy, like that dizzy phase where I'm like, all right, man, I feel it coming. You know, right then, like sometimes good ideas come through, and like I'll I'll have to like wake up and write it down. That's oh, shit, yeah, I'm not <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All this energy. Right, right, this. right. So I mean, that, I don't know that. I just thought about that, but that's kind of like mm -hmm. I, I always find that weird about myself. Like right before I'm like dozing off, I, like an idea comes, I'm like, wow, that's like the craziest thing. I don't know why I don't think about that when I'm awake. <laughs> you know, it's, it's almost like it's a state of exhaustion and like yeah. relaxing and not. Maybe not being your your usual like anxious state or depressed right. state or whatever. You're just kind of like being. Yeah. And, then, and, and 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 to your point, like sometimes I also find like if I just take an hour just to think, like just to like don't don't just think about this one thing that you're trying to accomplish. I get so much done in that hour just thinking about it. But you know you gotta think. Most of the time, people don't. You're just nonstop going all the time. Mm -hmm work, driving home, whatever it might be, that you don't really get that time. It's music, it's noise, it's kids, it's whatever it might be. But like, I notice that too. Sometimes I come up with my best ideas. I'm like, man, I, should, I just need to think more. Like, just take the time to think about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think setting aside time for that, like blocking yeah. it off on the calendar is really important. Yeah. Um, 
and then also building in space and time just to you know, throw the AirPods in, listen right. to jazz, and shoot around. Yeah, yeah. There's incredible benefit to that. And, yeah. and you know, we have the Gary Vee events this week and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gary Vee's big thing is like work. Sun, sundown, you're working. Right, right. And, and I, I have consumed a ton of his content. He's inspired me and helped me in a lot yeah. of ways. That's one area I disagree. I, yeah. I think having a, a, a degree of balance in your life enhances everything that you yeah. do. Yeah. If you go all the way in on one thing and burn out on it, yeah. or, or, or aren't fully energized and motivated and equipped to be able to do that work, yeah. it's, it's going to be a lower quality product even if you put more time in yeah. it. Whereas if you, you block out that one hour, right, right. and you've already done your shooting around, you've already yeah. done your, your meditation or your morning routine, you, you've already prepared yourself for, yeah. for doing the best for that one hour. I think you get more out of that one hour than you do for eight sure. hours. Yeah, of, yeah of just working. Sleepy, yeah, going yeah. through the motions. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah. quality over, yeah. over quantity, I yeah. think, in, in that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm glad <laughs> you're coming on Friday. We'll, yeah, uh, yeah, man. We'll have fun. And yeah. Get, so get lit. It's, it's Super Bowl week. This is yeah. going to come out for, for a couple of weeks. Okay, but, cool. Uh, it's, it's Super Bowl week in Atlanta. There's, yes, man, sir. There's so much opportunity. So much going on. What, what are you, with Georgia followers, mm-hmm. and, and, and personally, what are you involved with this week? What kind this of week? stuff is, yeah. is, is coming coming down the pipeline? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, one, I feel like we're, uh, well, I feel like we're about to release like a Super Bowl shirt. Uh, so that you know, Super Bowl base shirt. Um, so that's big nice. for us. Uh, um, as far as like events and stuff, I'm actually going to the Super Bowl. So yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, how that's that, a, how that happened. Uh, so I, I I usually get media passes to each game, mm-hmm. um, each well each Falcons game. So with the uh, Super Bowl being in the Falcon Stadium, the staff there knows me and like kind of. You know, gave us that stamp and was like, "Hey, GA followers, needs to go to the Super Bowl." And I was like, "Yes, we do." <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to the Super Bowl. Before then, there's like a, um, there's like a Bud Light is actually doing uh, like a music festival that I'll probably be a part of. It's like a three day festival. It's the first time they're doing like a music festival around the Super Bowl. Wow. Yeah. So we're gonna we're be, we're a part of that, and then Shaq has an event. What's it called again? <laughs> Shaq's, Shaq's Fun House. <laughs> It's supposed to be like a circus, EDM, Migos are going to be You're there. Such a yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to do that on Friday. And today I have to go to this. Um, uh, Deion Sanders is having like this ESPN 30 for 30 oh, awesome. uh, yeah, premiere. So Legend. it's just, yeah, it's just like a lot of uh, like Super Bowl events. Nothing like, nothing too. We're not like partnering with any of the events. I'm just going to them really. Gotcha. Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be an attendee for once. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. You should. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, with the Gary Vee stuff, we're doing a meet and greet on, on Thursday. And then Friday right, right. night, um, yeah. we, uh, we have a Super Bowl party. Right, right. We'll yeah, that I'll, that. I'm stepping in there. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good time. Yeah. Um, well, cool. Well, it, it, what, it, and we, we can kind of wrap up with this. Yeah. You, you've had your finger on the pulse of Atlanta. And, and you know Georgia in general, but specifically Atlanta for the last yeah. nearly a decade. Yeah. With everything that's happening, this new stadium, having you know um, a new soccer team that just won the mm-hmm. MLS Cup, having the NCAA national championship here last year, having the Super Bowl here this year, all the construction that's going on in, in your in your mind, what's what's happening in Atlanta? Why is it happening now? What does it mm. mean? Where are we going? Yeah, I often think about that. Um, what's happening? I think there's just like, there's just so many people are coming together. You know what I'm saying? And like, I don't know. Atlanta is a beautiful city, man. Like, I, I've traveled a lot of places, but it's it's a unique it's unique here because you have so many different cultures. And I think, I mean, it's like that everywhere, but like in the South, it's not really. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just. I think the city's getting bigger. You know, more things are getting built. I mean, it's just more attractions. Like, I don't know, man. I always, I think, like in the next ten years, like Atlanta is going to be. I mean, it's already kind of up there with like Los Angeles and New York. Um, but I think it, it's, it'll be like neck and neck with those those places. Um, and then we have a great music scene. It's just like everything is popping here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we I, like. I, Hip hop has done amazing things yeah, for yeah. Atlanta and then vice versa. Yeah, yeah. What, what I think is really interesting is all the film and TV oh yeah, and the film. Oh yeah, I forgot about that stuff that's coming. Yeah, I'm oh, turning man. 
It's like Hollywood. South it's literally like Hollywood. They call it Yollywood. Yollywood. Say y'all. Yollywood. Yolly. 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 I love that. But I mean, uh, how have, how have you seen? Because you're you're you know plugged in with with Big Boy and yeah. you know, a lot of the Atlanta kind of um, celebrities or, or talent. Like, uh, do, do you think that trend's going to continue? And 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 how how is it affecting circles that you run in? Yeah, um, you know that's hard for me to think about because like. To do that, like I, I sometimes I don't take myself out and like look down at what's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm just like living in it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like it's hard for me to really see what's gonna happen next. I just kind of, I know like I just got to be a part of it, you know what I'm saying? I got to be a part of the trend or what's 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 what is trending. So I don't know. I um, I don't know. It's tough for me to, to for me to answer like. <laughs> But yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I think I think this trend will continue to grow. I think Atlanta is going to continue to grow. Music, music, film, everything is going to um, multiply. I, I just don't know what it's going to turn into, you know. And I'm I'm interested to see it. Awesome! I'm excited <laughs> too, man. Well, yeah. Um, let people know where where they can find you, where they yeah. can find uh, Twitter followers, DMV followers, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So my Instagram is uh, G G A followers official now. Um, the Twitter is GA followers, um, and my personal Instagram is Jeremy Pop Jones. Um, Where's the Pop come from? Pop is uh, so Pop is populous is my last name that my mom had. Um, okay. So they call me, you know. And back in high school, my older brother was in twelfth grade, and I was in tenth grade. We were two years apart. And they would call him Pop. They would call me Lil Pop. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so I, you know, I just stuck with it um, ever since middle school and high school. So, nice. But yeah. Um, so Jeremy Pop Jones. Jeremy Pop Jones. Okay. And yeah, I think that's it. I mean, awesome. I and any anything? I mean, you talk about the Super Bowl shirt. Is that going to be yeah. available post Super Bowl? Is there is there other yeah, stuff that people can check out? Yeah, I would. Uh, no, there isn't. <laughs> no, <Nothing. Ignore us. laughs> uh, yeah. Just just follow us, and then you'll see what what comes comes from that. Perfect. Yeah, man. Jeremy, I appreciate you coming on, man. Yes, yeah, yes, this was fun. for sure, for sure. I appreciate you having me. We'll have to we'll have to put a chess set between. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Next time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Good old chess set. Yeah, All man. Right. Thanks. All right.